In this video, we're going to talk about finding the domain of a function from a formula uh, for the function. So when a function is described by a formula, like f of x equals x squared, let's say, then unless stated otherwise, the domain is assumed to be the set of all inputs for which the expression defined is a real number. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. Uh, example, state the domain for each of the following functions and use interval notation and also set builder notation. So I'll explain what that means in a, in a second here. But notice our first function is f of x equals 1 over x minus 3. Notice we can put in any number for x that we want with one exception. The one exception is 3. We can't put in 3 for x because uh, if we put in 3, we'd have 1 over 0, and we can't divide by 0. You can't have the 0 in the denominator of a function. And so uh, this domain would be the set of all real numbers except x equals 3. Now the way that you'd write this in what's called set builder notation is you draw these squiggly uh, brackets here, and you write x such that x is not equal to 3. Okay, so these little curly braces here, uh, and this x with the colon there, I think of the colon, these two dots, is meaning such that. So the set of all x such that x is not equal to 3. Okay, that's called set builder notation. Uh, we'll do some more examples in, in a minute here. So how would you write this in interval notation? Now, notice the interval of uh, the, the, the set of all possible inputs is really two intervals. It's the interval from minus infinity to 3. And we always put an open parentheses around an infinity. And we're putting an open parenthesis around 3 because our domain does not include 3. We're not going to put a bracket there. But also it's the interval from 3 to infinity. So how do we write that our set is, is these two intervals? Well, our, our domain is the union of these two intervals. So you put this union symbol here. Uh, it's sometimes called a cup symbol. It's not really the letter U. But it's a union symbol. So if you're working this in my math lab, it should at the bottom of the screen, there should be some little palette where it gives you uh, the possibility of writing this union symbol. Okay, so the union of these two intervals uh, is the domain, or it's the set of all x's such that x is not equal to 3. Okay, let's do another example. Uh, notice for g here, uh, g of x is the square root of x minus 2 and then plus 7. What values could we put in here that would give us real numbers as outputs? Well, notice, for example, if you put in 0 for x, we would end up getting the square root of x minus 2, or the square root of 0 minus 2, which is the square root of negative 2, which is an imaginary number. right? It's not a real number. We can't take the square root of a negative number. So notice what we want. We want x minus 2 to be greater than or equal to 0, right? In order for uh, this to be defined, x minus 2 has to be positive. So if we add 2 to both sides here, notice what we get is we want x to be greater than or equal to 2. If x is greater than or equal to 2, then g of x will make sense. It'll be defined. So that's our domain. So in set builder notation, this would be the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, that's how you write the domain in set builder notation. Now in interval notation, we're just talking about the interval from 2 to positive infinity. Okay, and it's closed at 2 because 2 itself we can put in. We can find g of 2 because the square root of 0, that's defined, right? That's 0. Uh, and we can plug in any number that's greater than 2. So our interval notation, it would be the interval from 2 to infinity. Okay, and finally, uh, f of x has a little bit more of a complicated formula in this case. It's 2x plus 10 over x squared plus 5x minus 14. This is what's called a rational function. It's a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And this will be defined for every value of x that doesn't make the denominator be 0. Okay, so we don't want to be dividing by 0 down here. So how can we figure out what values of x make the denominator be 0? Well, what we have to do is factor the denominator. So the numerator is 2x plus 10. We don't have to worry about factoring that. You could if you wanted to. You could write that as 2 times the quantity x plus 5. But it's okay to have a 0 up top in the numerator, but we don't want to have any uh, a value of x that makes the denominator be 0. So how do we factor x squared plus 5x minus 14. And factoring is, is kind of trial and error a lot of times. Uh, notice it's, we're going to have x plus or minus something and x plus or minus something here. Because x times x, that's going to give us the x squared. 
Well, we need to find two numbers that multiply to get minus 14. And you could do something like 1 and 14 or 2 and 7, where one of the numbers is positive and one of them is negative. And I think uh, to get minus 14, I think doing x plus 7 and x minus 2 is going to work. Because if we do x times x, that would be x squared. And if we do a 7 times an x, that would be 7x. And the minus 2 times x, that would be minus 2x. And 7x plus minus 2x, that gives us our 5x that we need. And 7 times minus 2, that's minus 14. Okay, now the question is, what values of x can you plug in here that would make the denominator be 0? Well, notice if you put in 2 for x, positive 2, that would make the uh, denominator 0. So we don't want x to be 2. And also we don't want x to be minus 7 because if you plugged in minus 7 there for x that would make it be 0. So in set builder notation it's the the set of all x's such that uh, x is not equal to 2 and x is not equal to 7. So you could either write a comma here or you could put the word and, but it's the set of all x's such that x is not equal to 2 and x is not equal to 7. And as in, uh, in interval notation, this would be the interval from minus infinity all the way up to 2, union with the interval from 2 to 7, union with the interval from 7 to infinity. Okay, so if you thought on a number line, uh, you'd have the whole interval on the number line from minus infinity to 2, but it would not include 2 itself. Okay, and then you have the interval from 2 to 7, again, not including 2 and not including 7. And then finally, you have another interval from 7 to infinity, not including 7. Okay, so this is, would be the domain of the function expressed in interval notation, whereas this is the domain of the function expressed in set builder notation.